Enjoy with your headphones for a better listening experience. Please watch till the end of the video to have the most scariest of the stories. Spoiler, the cabin in the woods, too much or genius? 1. Spoiler review, a group of teens visits a cabin, that's right, you guessed it, in the woods. As the night goes on, we learn that according to what they do, a certain monster will come and kill them. The movie turns out to be a big project from some company. I think. In the end all those monsters they have in this company, that they can release get loose and the movie becomes a bloodbath and massacre. I watched The Cabin in the Woods six months ago, and I really didn't like the last half of it. I really liked the idea of a scare factory or a scare company, but when the monsters got loose halfway in the factory, it became a massacre and blood was everywhere, I really couldn't take it seriously or say that I liked it. One of my friends has another take on it. He thinks the movie is genius and particularly good. What's your thoughts on it? Too much or funny in the way it makes fun of the horror genre. 2. Cabin in the Woods is basically an essay film about the current state of horror films whilst also being entertaining. The film-going audience are represented by the old gods. Our tastes have evolved from women getting thrown into volcanoes but they are still pretty simple. The directors are not portrayed as artists but guys who just have fun doing their job. They can't exactly be creative and have to stick to pretty rigid plans to appease us. This is what Goddard and Weldon are saying about horror today. We're just telling the same stories in diverse ways, hence the interchangeable monsters, with the basic differentiator being how people get killed. Not even characters differ as much as their deaths do. It's not a completely hopeless film though. The last third actually is something we have never seen before. It's a horror movie quite unlike anything else. Of course, this frustrates the old gods because it is unlike what they are used to. Watching this film kind of reminded me of the South Park movie. That film kind of prematurely reacted to criticisms that the film would likely get in that it tackled the crude language issue head on. Meaning that those who complained about it would have clearly missed the film's point. In the same way, Cabin in the Woods ends as if to say if you don't like this ending then you're the problem with horror. No one can try anything new because people just think it's weird. While I think there are valid reasons not to like the end, I think it's partially true. Horror is such a stale genre at times that I relish the films that dare to be crazy, to show me something I've never seen. Not everything needs to be grim dark serious. Other than that, it's a very well acted, written, and directed film overall. The characters are distinct and funny which makes their change into more stereotypical characters pretty disheartening. In horror films today there rarely are interesting characters as much as there are just vehicles to take us from scare to scare, example, The Conjuring. In the end of Cabin in the Woods the journey these characters have been on affects them in such a way that makes them make the decision they make at the end. Again, this angers the old gods because in their eyes horror shouldn't be about character development or stories changing based on character traits. The audience itself is the barrier to more complex stories. I don't completely agree with that because it's more the studio's fault for making these films, but I guess a lot of people do see them. Overall, I just find this film to be a lot of fun. It's nice to see a genuinely distinct horror film that also has something to say. Despite the film's anger towards the genre, you can still tell by all the amazing details that Goddard has an intense love for horror. Scenes like when they go in the basement and are looking at all the trinkets are so delightful because we can recognize what's happening. Then all we can think about is the insane manner of creatures hidden away by these items. In almost every scene there's something to appreciate beyond the simple what exactly are we seeing right now. Not going to say it's genius but it is very clever and I really hope filmmakers continue to say screw the old gods and keep making original and interesting horror films. Edit, it might even be a sign of what the film's talking about that people even ask if it was too much. If a story is already established as pretty wild, which Cabin in the Woods is, then shouldn't we as an audience just roll with it rather than expecting the film to dial things back? 3. It's a love letter to the horror genre. There's a line in there somewhere from, excuse me, Eric from Billy Madison or maybe his cohort, something like, the virgin doesn't have to die, as long as she suffers. Watch an old Friday the 13th, or Nightmare on Elm Street, or hell, even a few Hellraisers to see characters' sins catch up with them. In fact, 
Watch just the first few minutes of one and see if you can figure out who might survive, not that hard, really. Cabin in the Woods quite literally takes the horror movie tropes we are so used to and turns them into this clinical, formulaic operation that the directors, or whatever you want to call it slash them, need to happen every so often to satisfy some sadistic need to see some suffering. Only Cabin in the Woods uses its military-type newbie who refuses to bet on the fate of the victims as an example of an audience member who's not accustomed to this form of brutal, sadistic entertainment. His moral turn, maybe an hour before champagne time, invites the audience to get off the ride, though the victims are still on board. It even gives you hope with the tunnel demolition. And the, haha. The bike jump. The brutal hopelessness finally sinks in along with the RV. For Cabin in the Woods, is an oddity. I can't call it a horror film in the strictest sense, because it just doesn't fit in my opinion. I'd say it's more in line with black comedy. The halfway point when everything gets turned upside down to me is almost comedic. It definitely is when the merman scene plays. Sure it's entertaining, a classic it most certainly isn't though, but most of this stems from the fact that you don't know what the f asterisk 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 is going on under the cabin, and it's something different to what's been done before once you get to the halfway point, I recall one film being similar where it was like the show Big Brother where they murder people. The premise is genius, once you get the twist at the end, and also means you could plant most horror films in the same universe as Cabin in the Woods. That's the genius part. Allow me to recommend another amazing horror slash comedy. Dale and Tucker vs. Evil. It's amazing and further reinforces my thought that Alan Tudyk is one of the most underused actors around. 5. Personally, I think it's garbage. It's a classic example of making a point that seems incredibly controversial, while it actually isn't at all, and thought that involving a huge group of people who believe that they are on the side of the minority that knows the truth, while they are the majority. It claims to be angering the old gods by tearing up the horror genre, while all it does is just repeat the same old cliches that everybody knows about and is considered the biggest problem in the horror genre. It's been discussed to death, and the majority of the people who love the movie only do so because it is finally being acknowledged in a major movie release. Except that it already has happened with the scary movie franchise and similar movies. There are no angered old gods. I don't think that there is anyone who isn't stupid that doesn't like the movie because it didn't turn out to be a classic horror movie. From the first scene that we see with Jensen and Whit Ford it's obvious that the movie isn't aiming for that. It's fine that the movie criticizes the cliches, but I think that it does it in the worst viable way, resulting in me rolling my eyes for most of the movie. Okay, the cliches are overdone in the horror industry, and it needs something new. So, what's the point of showing the same old things, in an over-the-top fashion that just screams here, look at what's wrong with the horror industry for 2-3 of the movie? Do they think that the audience wouldn't understand what's going on after a couple of scenes? 6. I think to claim that Cabin in the Woods is simply tearing down and attacking tropes is missing the point entirely. That was Scream's work. CITW ultimately redeems the troops and injects them with fun and purpose. The difference between Scream and Cabin is the difference between postmodernism and ultramodernism. Both solid movies, but I think Cabin is perfect for its time and place. 7. Cabin in the Woods is definitely not for everyone. It's a somewhat subtle meta-commentary on the nature of current teen horror slashers and torture porn in Hollywood. It combines elements from a number of subgenres of horror and comedy. If you are one of those people that completely avoids the kind of movies Cabin is trying to make fun of, a lot of the movie's humor will be completely lost, or just be an exercise in preaching to the choir. Here's the plot synopsis. A group of organized Thuluian cultists organize ritualistic killings to appease old gods. These killings happen by using actual monsters. They are broadcast to an audience that isn't really shown. The victims aren't supposed to know what's really going on or defeat the monsters. It's something like a reality TV show where killings actually happen. At the office of the people orchestrating all this, we see a complete disregard for the victims' lives and an almost sadistic form of entertainment playing out, where they take bets on various nuances of the slaughter. A group of teenagers go on a trip to a cabin and become victims of the above ritualistic slaughter. They are puppeteered into acting out conventional horror stereotypes, the virgin, the slut, the jock, the nerd, and the joker. 
A lot of this conditioning into these tropes happens through chemicals slash pheromones and early on the film hints that the characters have normal non-stereotypical personalities. One of the biggest problems I had personally with the horror elements of this film was the lack of suspense. Very early on in the movie, in fact, right at the beginning we see cave paintings of sacrifices. Then at regular intervals we actually see the puppeteers so we, the audience, constantly know what is going to happen. We then see the megadome that houses this reality TV torture chamber slash cabin the moment the RV enters the valley we see an invisible polygon dome like thing. Then soon after, we see an interrogation room screen. Anyway, the problem with all this is it really takes away from the fear of the unknown and the very fabric of suspense. Imagine if you were watching Psycho and someone spoiled it for you. The effect just isn't the same once you know what and why things are going to happen. Although the film in its own subtle way is parodying teen slashers, the first hour of the film is exactly that. We don't see a zombie tripping or falling or monsters behaving in an unconventionally funny way, nor is there any humor as such. What we do see though, is a lot of references for B-grade horror film tropes. Pop culture references can indeed be an excellent tool in comedy. The community does this really well, and one of the things Abed does is meta-humor and acting out references to older films. But this is just one aspect of community. Abed's skits are sometimes genius, but sometimes completely missed. Imagine if you took one of those haphazard skits and stretched it over a full movie. That's exactly what a cabin is like. There's always a metaphorical layer to everything that's going on for example, the old gods are actually the audience of B-grade horror that's demanding more. The world ending signifies that horror movies need to move away from these cliches. Having all the monsters exit from the elevator signifies that they are tropes that should not be further done to death. If you are a fan of quirky, more random offbeat humor, you will appreciate some of the aspects of this film. Absurdity is often used as a mechanic, for example, there's a scene where a unicorn skewer one of the evil SWAT guards of the cult. No one expects a positive creature to be shown in a negative light as a monster. Drag me to hell did this with a talking goat. But this kind of thing is really haphazard. If you go in expecting a genuinely scary movie, or unsettling horror, you'll be disappointed. Similarly, if you go in expecting uproarious comedy horror like Evil Dead 2, Shaun of the Dead, or more slapstick stuff like Scream, you won't be amused at all. I didn't think the comedy was on par with Tucker and Dale or Zombieland either. One of the worst things about this kind of genre deconstruction slash parody is that the movie is constantly self-aware and laughing at itself. Sadly, the audience is often just left in the lurch puzzled what the fuss is all about. Something else that really bugs me is the lack of sincerity in the parodying of the slasher subgenre. There's a certain hypocrisy in the execution. Is the movie a scathingly sharp satire of the genre? Or is it a tribute? The filmmakers can't really figure this out, they even call it a loving hate letter. Why not come clean and deliver a sharp critical satire of a subgenre that obviously sucks? What's holding them back? Are they trying to be politically correct and not offend filmmakers and audiences that actually like torture porn slash teen horror? The final elevator sequences were actually satisfying to watch the evil cultists being slaughtered by various monsters. Satisfying like watching the Nazis getting slaughtered in Inglorious Bastard. TLDR, an interesting deconstruction slash parody meta commentary of slasher horror tropes, but really haphazard. Not a film to be taken seriously. It's not really horrifying, and it's not really laugh to laugh aloud. It occupies a very peculiar niche subgenre and might possibly be a cult classic for some people. 8. I'm not trying to be snarky here, but if you're trying to take Cabin in the Woods seriously, you're setting yourself to hate it. It's not supposed to be serious, it's a wacky crazy deconstruction of traditional horror movies. The humor is pretty apparent right away. As an aside, it's a fun movie to rewatch. You'll pick up a lot of really hilarious minute details as the characters are gradually forced into their roles. 9. The tone is quite silly, and it almost veers into parody. But it's not a parody of horror so much as it's a horror comedy. I like CITW, but its comedy somewhat diffused its rather clever premise. I would have liked to see the same story done seriously, without all the one-liners. I love H.P. Lovecraft, 
and the whole Elder Gods most definitely comes from his writings, so that's a plus. But it's kind of forgettable for me. And that last shot of a CGI hand, that was just dumb. 10. I thought it was one of the best movies of the year, one of the most entertaining, and a valuable critique on horror slash slasher. It was smart and funny, I don't really think much else needs to be said, yes this type of film has been made before, it's similar to Scream and obviously heavily influenced by The Evil Dead. But it's a horror movie have been waiting to see come out since it had been so long since there was one worthy of watching. 11. I think the movie is entertaining, but not any sort of masterpiece. My biggest problem with it is that I just don't think it's a horror movie. Someone else labeled it a black comedy, and maybe that is accurate, but it's simply not a horror movie. It resembles a horror movie, but only so as to be able to make fun of the genre. 12. The Cabin is to horror what Scream is to slasher. I loved it. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe. The Internet Surfer on YouTube for more horror and scary stories.